This video gives some properties of determinants. I'm going to start with this warm-up example. See if you can figure out the determinant of this 4x4 four four matrix. One hint is you might want to expand along a row or column that has a lot of zeros to make your life easier. So I think I'll expand along the first column. Then the determinant of B is going to be 3 times the determinant of this 3x3 three three submatrix minus 0 times the determinant of this 3x3 three three submatrix plus 0 times this 3x3 three three determinant minus 0 times this last 3x3 three three determinant. Well, I was kind of wasting my time even writing down all these 3x3 three three determinants because 0 times anything is going to be 0. So these last three terms are all just 0. And the determinant of B is just 3 times this 3x3 three three determinant. So continuing, I'm going to figure out this 3x3 three three determinant by expanding along its first column, since it has a lot of zeros in it. So let me carry the 3 and now start expanding. So that's 5 times a 2 by 2 determinant minus 0 times something plus 0 times something. So those drop out, and I just have the 3 times the 5 times that 2 by 2 determinant. Finally, I can calculate the 2 by 2 determinant as just negative 2 times 10 minus 0. So I'm ultimately getting 3 times 5 times negative 2 times 10. That's negative 300. But more interestingly, my determinant is just the product of these entries on the diagonal. And that's no coincidence. That came directly out of expanding along this column with almost all zeros to just get that 3 times the determinant of here. And expanding this gives us the 5 times the determinant of this. And expanding this gives us the negative 2 times 10. So this is an example of an upper triangular matrix. An upper triangular matrix is a matrix with all entries 0 below the diagonal. Similarly, a lower triangular matrix is a matrix with all entries 0 above the diagonal. I guess the upper triangular refers to the fact that it's only the only non-zero entries are in the upper triangle, including the diagonal, and the lower triangular is something like this, whose only non-zero entries are in this lower triangle. So a triangular matrix is a matrix that is either upper triangular or lower triangular. And as we saw above, the determinant of a triangular matrix is just the product of its entries on the diagonal. That makes a triangular matrix one whose determinant is super easy to compute. Now let's go on to our main topic for this video, which is how the determinant interacts with other matrix operations. So let's let A and B be n by n square matrices. And let's let K be a scalar. Please pause the video and see if you can come up with any rules for the determinant of k times a, the determinant of a transpose, the determinant of a times b, and the determinant of a inverse for an invertible matrix. The idea is to write down the determinant of these quantities in terms of the determinant of a, or in this case, in terms of the determinant of a and b. You might want to write down some example matrices and work out some examples. We saw in a previous video that if we multiply one row of A by K, then that multiplies the determinant by K. Well, if we're multiplying the whole matrix A by K, that's like multiplying the first row by K, and then multiplying the second row by K, and all the way through the end row by K. So that should multiply the determinant by K n times. So I'll write three dots for therefore, 
the determinant of Ka is going to be K to the n times the determinant of A, where n is the number of rows of A, also the number of columns since A is square. What about the determinant of A transpose compared to the determinant of A? If you think it should be the same as the determinant of A, you're correct. Certainly it's true for our two by two matrices. The crisscross product is the same for the matrix and for its transpose. But if we look at a three by three matrix and its transpose, then evaluating the determinant of A by expanding along the first row and evaluating the determinant of A transpose by expanding along the first column gives us two expressions with the same coefficients here, three, negative four, and seven, and two by two matrices that are the transposes of each other and therefore have the same determinants. And so therefore, the determinant of A and the determinant of A transpose must be the same. It's the same computation. An inductive argument like that going up one dimension at a time will show us that a uh, determinant of uh, A and A transpose is also the same for a four by four matrix or a five by five matrix or any N by N matrix. What about the determinant of A times B? If you worked on an example, you might have noticed that it equals the determinant of A times the determinant of B. This fact is a little tricky to prove in general, but it's not hard to prove, say, for upper triangular matrices. If you work out what happens when you multiply two upper triangular matrices, you'll see that you get another upper triangular matrix. And in addition, the entries on the diagonal are just the product of the diagonal entries. For example, this entry here, where I multiply this row and this column, because of these two zeros that hit the eight and the nine, I'm just gonna get five times two. Similarly, in this entry that comes from the second row of A times the second column of B, I'm just gonna get two times one, since the zero times the seven and the seven times the zero are both zero. Similarly, this entry here is three times four. And I might get other horribly messy stuff in these positions, but I'm not worried about that because it doesn't affect the determinant. Now we can see that since the determinant of A is the product of its diagonal entries and the determinant of B is the product of its diagonal entries, the determinant of A times B is the product of its diagonal entries. That ends up just being the diagonal entries of A times the diagonal entries of B, or the determinant of A times the determinant of B. So the fact that the determinant of A times B is the determinant of A times the determinant of B seems to work at least for upper triangular matrices, and in fact, it turns out to work for all matrices. Finally, if A is invertible, how does the determinant of A inverse compare to the determinant of A? Well, we know that A being invertible means that A times A inverse is the identity matrix, and A inverse times A is the identity matrix. Using this multiplication property above, the determinant of A inverse times A is the same as the determinant of A inverse times the determinant of A. But that has to equal the determinant of I, and since I is just a triangular matrix with zeros, it's actually both upper triangular and lower triangular, but in any case, its determinant is just the product of its diagonal entries, which is one. Therefore, we can solve for determinant of A inverse by taking one over the determinant of A. If you're worried that you might end up dividing by zero here, you don't have to. If A is invertible, the determinant of A can't be zero. It can't be zero because its product with something else has to be one. You might notice that I haven't put anything on this list about the determinant of A plus B. That's because there's no relationship between the determinant of a sum and the determinant of the two pieces. Let's talk some more about invertible matrices and their determinants. We just saw that if a matrix A is invertible, then its determinant 
is not equal to zero. In fact, this is an if and only if statement. So if it's invertible, then the determinant's not zero, and if the determinant's not zero, then the matrix is invertible. These two conditions, A being invertible and the determinant of A being not zero, are equivalent. Let's use this equivalence of conditions to check if this three by three matrix is invertible. If we look at the determinant, we can calculate it pretty quickly since this is an upper triangular matrix. The determinant of this matrix is the product of its diagonal entries, three times two times six, or 36, which is not zero. Therefore, the matrix is invertible. In this video, we found that the determinant of a triangular matrix is the product of its diagonal entries. We found ways to relate the determinant of a matrix A to the determinant of a scalar multiple of A, the determinant of A's transpose, and the determinant of A inverse if A is invertible. This video also stated the fact that a matrix A is invertible if and only if its determinant is not zero.